Shada bala kataya, ende brande katos, brande kete balianos. Oh, arabali ana makatali ano si akaparada. Elada bere katali ando so bara bali ana kataya. Eli brande kesi kataya, eye gada 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 katos, ali ke paramali ano. Ante pali anda bada kataya, eradi ke paramasi kataya. Elia gada bada bakos, eragada gada bari ana makataya. The King of Glory, we owe you. Amen. your voice pray in the Holy Ghost lift up your voice pray in the Holy Ghost lift up your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost
church. Olua, Olu. to deliver till I got here I was close to tears I felt like something was about to happen and that is because something is actually about to happen there is always a day that the Lord has set apart for a particular thing and in today's meeting is your own day ordained by God for a sending forth Please do not think of this meeting like, oh, they are wearing pink. Forget about it. It's not a, a get-together for a, a play. It's a spiritual meeting. It's an Holy Ghost meeting. It's a meeting ordained by God. I'm yet to set the pace ahead for the meeting. Can I beg you that you put your heart in what God is doing here today? Let your attention be on God. I prayed so much this morning. I said, God, I just don't want them to return the same. Let everyone who enters into this place receive a mantle that they will never recover from. Let there be an infilling that they will never recover from. Let there be an infilling that they will never recover from. You have prayed, you have fasted, you have waited on God for this meeting. It is not a joke. Before we sit there, we're going to pray. And you're going to pray in the Holy Ghost. Now listen to me. The reason we pray in the Spirit before a meeting is not, it's not a cliche. It's not because we want to pray. It's because the Bible says that the carnal man cannot understand the things of the spirit so we have to stay in that place of pressing into the spirit so that our our heart our mind our soul will be able to receive the outpourings of the spirit do you understand me do you understand me so there are outpourings of the spirit there are things happening in the spirit right now there are quickenings in the atmosphere there, there are exchanges going on be before you even came there there are outpourings that are starting to happen here. Come on. The portals here are already opened. And angels of God are sent and descend upon this place. So you will help yourself to be in the spirit to receive the quickness of the spirit. Can you pray in the spirit? Yeah. 
it in the prayers last night. It is one thing that we say that you are being sent for. But then God began to quicken in my heart yesterday that there is a qualification to be sent for. That before you can even say that yes, I am being sent for, I am going for, there is a qualification. And I'm going to tell you about the qualification, but before we begin, I want you to pray with all of your heart. Father, qualify me for sending forth. Father, qualify me for my going forth. Whatever I need to be, whoever I need to be, whatever preparation that I need to take, Father, help me to be qualified for my sending forth. There were 12 disciples. 12 of them were going, but one of them fell out along the way. Lord, help me that I will be qualified to my... Is this how you pray? Is this how you pray? Is this how you pray? Let me be qualified for my going forth. Let me be qualified for my going forth. Whatever is a weight inside of me, take it away. Take it away. Take it away. Take it away. Take me to that place where you want me to be. That I will be qualified for my going forth. That I will be made ready, prepared on every side to journeys I've never been. To go through places I've never been. In the name of Jesus. I
blessed be your name, O oh God. Father, we ask that you would have your way. We ask that you would glorify your name in this meeting. That all glory will return to you. Lord, I had like I had this morning. Let nobody return the same. Let nobody leave here the same way that they came. Let every heart burn in this place. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Please have your seat. God bless you. You can welcome the person to your left and to your right. Tell them you're welcome to Oasis Conference. We've anticipated this day for so long. And it's finally here. Can we give Jesus a shout of praise? <laughs> Hallelujah. Do I have uh, the prophetic woman in this place? Oh, thank you for coming. Thank you for making it down. Royal Dardam's in the house. God bless you. Thank you for supporting to make this day a reality. Can I ask that if we have pastor's wives in the house, you're a pastor's wife on any, any level, please, we have prepared a seat for you. Please come forward. Pastor's wives from every, any level, LCCG or surroundings, please come forward. Don't be shy. We love you. I've been trying to look around to see those that I know. Oh, please come forward. Please come forward. It's so good to see you, ma. So good to see you, ma. This way. Please help them with their bags. Thank you. You're welcome, ma. Thank you so much. This way, please. Thank you very much, Ma. We celebrate you. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can you celebrate yourselves? <laughs> Hallelujah. So there's a lot of allocation. There's a lot of allocation for us today. And I do not want us to miss out on any. I have just come here to, to align your heart before our guests will start ministering. And so your hearts will be aligned to receive all that Habba wants you to receive today. Hallelujah. Please open your Bibles with me to the book of Luke chapter 10, where we got our, where we got our text, our theme from. Luke chapter, Luke chapter 10, verse 2. Can I have someone on the keyboards? Thank you. Where is your laptop? Where is your laptop? Where is your laptop? Luke chapter 10, verse 2. Let me read from verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them. You can't hear me. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place where he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, the harvest truly is great. But the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. Last year we had the Oasis conference, Oasis retreat with the prophetic woman. Envoys had not started. And God gave us a theme, which was the anointing. And then immediately after that conference, God told me and made it clear to me that the next theme was going forth. 
that you receive the anointing not to sit down. You receive the anointing not to stay where you are. But you receive the anointing so that you can be sent forth. Hallelujah. So, as we were planning for this program, God made me understand even more that there are many people that God has given you assignments. You know. You know that he has given you assignments. You know that he has called you. You know that there is something that he wants you to do. But the place of going to do that assignment has just been impossible. Do I have a witness? That the place of you actually doing the work that he has sent you has been almost impossible. But you just say, I want to start, but I just don't know how to start. I want to do this thing, but I just don't know how to go about it. And there's this contention. But I tell you by the Spirit of God, that is why God brought you here. Hallelujah. Because as you're stepping out of this door today, you begin to do what he wants you to do. And you begin to do it exactly the way he wants you to do it. In the name of Jesus. And God gave us the scripture. When he was sending them out, he was sending out 70. And he sent them out two and two. And then he said, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. No, there is so much that I want to do, but the laborers are few. There is so much I want to send them, but the laborers are few. And he says, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send you to bring forth his harvest. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send Moyo, that he will send Sheol, that he will send Pharaoh me into his harvest. I have come by the Spirit of the Lord to tell you that you are the laborer that we have been waiting for. I have come to tell you by the Spirit of the Lord that you are that female warrior that we have been waiting for. You are that laborer that God has ordained. You are that laborer that, we have, that God has decided that you will defend the harvest of the Lord. You are that person, that woman that he has called, that man that he has called, that you will defend the harvest of the Lord. And it is by no coincidence that there are men here and he's saying to you all that you are that laborer that I am waiting for. One of the mandates that God has given me is to raise an army of female warriors unto him. That will defend his army. That will stand at the forefront. That will be forefront, forefront liners. That will stand to defend the work of the Father. In every spare, whatever they find themselves. And I also have an agenda to make women know and understand that the mandate of God upon your life is not little. The mandate of the womb upon you is not little. The mandate of the entire health, of the, the entire instruction by God for fruitfulness is laid upon the head of a woman. The entire multiplication of the woman, the entire fulfillment of, of the entire race is laid upon the woman. And the woman is pivotal to God. And even in this season, the woman gender is pivotal to God. And you can check through uh, history, there, there are folds and seasons where you will see the hand of God upon the woman gender so strongly. And again, it is happening now in the season where God is calling out female laborers. Female laborers that will go forth to draw in the harvest. God is calling forth female laborers, female kingdom warriors that will go out to draw in the harvest of the Lord. You are receiving that mandate today and you will not sit down on it. You would go forth in the name of Jesus. Let me quickly share another scripture with you. Mark chapter 3. Today you will receive your word. In the name of Jesus. Mark chapter 3 verse 13. Oh, 
If you're there, say praise God. Mark chapter 3 from verse 13. And he goeth up into a mountain and called unto him whom he would. <laughs> and they came unto him. Verse 14. And he ordained twelve that they should be with him. That he might send them forth to preach. The next verse. And to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. I'm going, to sh I'm going to be showing you six mandates from this, from this scripture. The first one is that there was a call. Scripture says that he went up into the mountain and he called unto him whom he would. There is a call. This program was announced. It was declared everywhere on social media. And so many people saw it. And so many people said they were going to come. And so many people have decided they were going to come. But one way or the other, they could not come. And I, I always say this as I believe so strongly. That there is no coincidence with God. There are always God incidences. So, there are areas where... They were, maybe there was a lot of flood and then the person could not make it or any circumstance and something would just stop somebody from coming. But one way or the other, as much as everything tried to stop you from coming, you still came. Am I right? As much as it wasn't so easy for you to come, you still came. And that is because there is no coincidences with God. He went up into the mountain and he called unto him whom he would. So let me put it to you that you are sitting here today because Abba has called you unto himself as he would. Can you say to yourself, I am called by God. It is not just a statement, it's an understanding that must sink into your spirit. That God has called me. Jesus stood up in the mountain and he called out unto himself, whom he would. So there is a calling. The second mandate and instruction is that there is an obedience to the call. There is an obedience to the call. So it is one thing to be called and it is another thing to do what? To obey the call. And so many times when you you feel like God is saying this is what you should do and then you begin to struggle if you will obey it or not. And then you are in that phase with God where you are contending. Should I do it? Should I not? Should I do it? Should I not? Maybe it is not God. Maybe it's not God that is speaking to me. Maybe it's just my mind. So there is a calling and there is an obedience to the call. And if I ask you, have you been obedient to his call? As Abba, I know that Abba has been knocking on your heart for several things. And have you been able to obey? Have you been able to say, yes, Lord? Have you been able to say, yes, I will do your will? Whatever you want, I will do. Wherever you send me, I will go. There's this song. I'll say yes, Lord. She and Taya, where you lead me, I will go. I'll say yes, Lord. I'll say yes. Some of you are going to say yes after this meeting. 
No, right here in this meeting, you will say yes to God. Those instructions that you've been struggling with, instructions to go back to your father's house and turn some things around that you have been ignoring, you will obey today. Oh, that yes is too low. You will obey today. You will say yes to the father. You will say yes to Abba. You will no longer stall on your obedience. In the name of Jesus. The next mandate. The next mandate and is the next mandate in Mark chapter 3 is the mandate of an ordination. Verse 14 says, and he ordained them. He ordained them. I'm telling you the things that will happen to you in this meeting. He ordained them. Some of you have come for your ordination ceremony. That was why we told our dadems to wear pink and look royal and look and look like you're, you're, you're coming for your own coronation. Because that is what is happening to you today. You will be ordained. You will be prepared for the work. You will be prepared for the assignment. In the name of Jesus. The next mandate here is the mandate of discipleship. The mandate of discipleship. He ordained 12 that they should be with him. A lot of times people get ordained and they begin to go without first being with God. There's a place of being with God. There's a place of staying with him. There's a place of becoming as he wants you to become. Hallelujah. Uh, yesterday, it was yesterday, I was listening to a message. And daddy was, was speaking about... Uh, the qualifications, like if you are fit enough to be sent forth. And then the Holy Spirit ministered to me at that minute, at that instance, that one of the greatest qualifications for you being sent forth is that you carry the presence of God. That, 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 is, that is like what you need to be sent forth. That you carry his presence. And carrying his presence is not saying, oh, I carry the presence of God or calling the name of Jesus. Carrying his presence will require you staying with him. It will require you staying there. It will require you communing with him. It will require you, it will require everything that koinonia, intimacy. And so when you speak, you speak as he would allow you to speak. Is it, is it Luke chapter, uh, Mark 16, 10? When he was sending for his disciples, he, he said to them, he said, when you open your mouth, I will fill it up. It's, it doesn't just happen to anybody. It happens to somebody that has stayed in his presence. Somebody that has communed with him. When he ordained the disciples, he ordained them to be with him. So there's a place of discipleship. There's a place where you sit down and say, God, teach me. What do I need to know? What is that thing that I need to know before I begin to go out? There are many people who wait out before, be, without staying in the place to learn and to become all that he wants them to be. And then when they begin to speak, they want to sound deep and they start saying all sorts. Hallelujah. The fifth mandate, is that number four? Number five, thank you, you're following. The fifth mandate is the sending forward, actually. And that he might send them forth to preach. So after he called them, after they obeyed the call, after they gathered together at Oasis Conference, and they were ordained, they heard the word, they were discipled, then he sent them forth. And so you are being sent for today. In fact, we're having a sending for ceremony for you today. And what that means is that after today, if I see you and I say, tell me about yourself. I've done that a number of times and I just tell somebody, tell me about yourself. And then they are saying all sort of things. I'm like, what is your assignment? What is your purpose? What are you doing? And then they are like, I know that God wants me to do this. I know that, I know that you know. 
But what steps are you taking to begin to do that thing? We, the world is tired of people that know purpose. We have, we have heard it so many times. You must know your purpose. You must know your calling. Yes, we now know our purpose. Tell us how we will move. I, yes, I know my purpose. But I need to begin to do it. We know that you know your purpose. You know that God has sent you to the fashion industry. You know that God has sent you to the mountains of, of education. You know that you are the next woman in politics. Have you started the journey? Have you actually begun? What are you doing? What do you what what what, what steps have you taken? What things have you done? You must move from the level of knowing it to actually doing it. And that is why this meeting is not like every other meeting. This meeting is not, is not just for a gathering so that sisters will say that we did something. No. This meeting is so that we move from here and we begin to do. And that is why we're going to have impartations tonight. We would hold ourselves, we would hold ourselves as sisters, we would pray. So that nobody will be missing. So that nobody will say, I did not get my own. Everybody will be touched. One way or the other. And so that, because I know, if what Jesus did is call the 70 and he sent them out two by two. We are more than 70 here. Maybe I didn't read to you when they came back. Let me read to you what happened when they came back. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Let me read from verse 16. Verse 16 says, And he that heareth you, heareth me. And he that despiseth you, despiseth me. And he that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. Did you see that? So, he's saying to you that because I have sent you, as you begin to speak, people no longer hear you, they begin to hear me. It's a level of ordination. That you are no longer speaking as yourself. You are speaking as God speaking to the people. So you enter whatever industry. And they are like, God, you say something. And they say, God said to me. They say, God said to me. And that, that has happened to me many times. And there are people that I owe dearly. Because every time they speak to me, I hear instructions directly from God. It's a mandate in the scripture. And that is how your life should be. That when you give a counsel, no, you just give a word of advice. And you are speaking the mind of God to the people. People just come to meet you and say, what, should I wear black or, or red? And you say, wear black. And that wearing black is not, is not you now. It is God instructing that person to wear black. Do you hear me? Do you hear with your inner ears? He that heareth you, heareth me. Then verse 17, I love this. And when the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. Pastor Daniel says this all the time, so many times. It's not like God cannot rebuke the devil by himself. Or God cannot do some things by himself. But he, he, has, he is too big for all those things. You get. He's no more in his level. Show ye. Let me, let me come home. So. He, he's, not, he's not in his level anymore. So then he entrusted to labor us. Like we. Nifemi. Commander Nifemi. Because in, in, in the spirit realm. I am a commander. And I'm, I'm saying that with understanding. It was, it was after one of the spiritual good boot camps. And I was praying and thanking God for the meeting. And God said to me, another star has been added to your badge. Because in the kingdom, when you have an understanding of uh, uh, you're at war, when you have the understanding that you are in the war front, you have understanding that you are on assignment. You have the understanding that you are a warrior. That you are in the army. 
there are levels, there are assignments, and there are promotions. So, the Nifemi that would minister to you, maybe last year, Oasis Retreat, is not the same Nifemi that is standing here. Because there is growth in the kingdom. And there is, I was still going to come to that, there is authority in the kingdom. So God looks at me and says, Commander Nifemi, there's one devil in that prince of Pasha in that place. I don't even want to disturb Angel Michael. You just go and do the work. And then you go there understanding that he that hears me, hears him. And you speak with that authority. And then Satan begins to fall as lightning. Because somebody obeyed the call. I didn't want to go to verse 19 yet, but I will read it. The last mandate is gifts. Verse 15. Mark, Mark 3, 15. Mark 3, 15. to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils and God showed me more even in Luke chapter 9 verse 1 you don't, don't move it just leave it Luke 9 verse 1 I'll read it from here when he called his 12 disciples together he gave them power and authority over all devils to cure diseases and God made me understand that he gives power to heal sicknesses and authority to cast out devils. Listen to this. This is how he explained to me. So, you might not take it as your own theology. But then I understood it like that. And he refrained my mind. So, he gave power to heal diseases. And authority to cast out devils. Can we please celebrate my DDK? My general DDK. You're welcome, Mom. You're welcome. So he gave power to heal sicknesses and authority to cast out devils. Do you see that? So they are gifts. He gives power and he gives authority. So you don't even have to get to a particular realm before you begin to speak with authority against devils. Do you see that? What he gives to you is authority. What he gives to you as a sending you forward is the authority to rebuke the devil. You have it. You have it. They came back and they said, Jesus said, I saw Satan falling down as lightning from heaven. In Luke 10, 19, he says, Behold, I give unto you power to trade on serpents and scorpions and over all powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So there are locations to your sending forth. There are gifts assigned to your sending forth. There are locations that you must possess. And locations that you must, you must hold, that you must have. As he's sending you forth, he's not sending you on, to go on your own. There are locations to you. So he is sending you forth. He is sending you forth. He is sending you forth. And if you believe that, if that word is for you, and we have spoken about the six mandates, that there is a calling, there is an obedience to the call, there's an ordination, there is discipleship, and there is a sending forth. And finally, there are gifts allocated to you being sent forth. And there is one more allocation to your sending forth that is a round off. That allocation is in Matthew chapter 10, 16 to 17. Matthew 10, 16 to 17. Can I have it? Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Ye will therefore be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. The next verse. But beware of men, 
for they will deliver you up to the councils and they will scourge you in their synagogues. So can I tell you a not so sweet story that there, there, there are persecutions are located to your sending forth. So I'm not telling you that it's going to be easy. I'm not telling you that it's all going to be a bed of roses. I'm not telling you that it's going to be sweet every time. Those of us that went to Makoko yesterday, how was it? Talk to me now. And some people go home at what time of the night? True floods. And that is not even a scourging. There are more scourges that will come. There are more persecutions that will come. We had a powerful testimony here on Sunday that got me in tears. It was Sister Tina's husband that said, he said, God told him that I will silence your mockers. And at the point he was saying that God take this off in a way and God was saying, you, you don't have mockers yet. And then when he started to have mockers, he knew he was having mockers. And after that, he began to see the hand of God. Mockers will come and people will insult you and they will persecute you and like DDK would say you don't even need to like me my assignment does not have a liking attached to it the allocation does not have um, 100,000 followers attached to it no but the assignment is that you hear God say go and then you go and you obey and you do what he wants him to do what he wants you to do before the end of this meeting your ears will hear your eyes will see and your heart will understand in the name of Jesus. I'm here as a foreigner and my mama is in the house. Can we put your hands together?